Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? This is Amanda. It's the 21st of September. I hope you're managing to keep a smile on your face and your heart open and your feet on the ground and your crown connected and open to spirit at all times because you absolutely need to be doing that right now. You also need to be shielding yourself with the armour of God, putting on your spiritual protection and flowing with the change that is here. I would like to talk about a change that I am going to be making to my social media accounts. Um, Yes, it's an enforced change, but I'm not the only one that's having to do this. I'd like to explain my reasons why I'm going to be removing some of the content from my YouTube channel. I'm going to tell you about uh, a new channel that I have just set up on Rumble, um, and I will put the link to that below. Uh, Please hear me when I say that I am not leaving YouTube. Uh, These changes that I'm making are strategic moves to protect this account. I've been here on YouTube since 2012. I think there's about 600, 700 videos that I've created and I will put up a fight if I believe that something of mine is under threat. I believe that this uh, channel, like many channels that try to talk about uh, subjects that are deemed controversial, even though they shouldn't be controversial, are being targeted at this time. Now, Metatron, my guide, always has my back. I'm not in fear. I always knew he would give me the green light when it's time to move and uh, flow into change. And that's what he's doing now. So what I intend to be doing is to stay on YouTube. I will still be producing uh, content on a weekly basis here, but subjects that are deemed controversial um, or we are not allowed to talk about anymore. And I'll tell you what type of subjects those are, although I'm sure most of you know what they are are going to be over on my Rumble channel. You will not find them here. It's a sad day because I've always been told by Spirit to stay where the mainstream is. And the mainstream has been YouTube for many years. But you may or may not know there was a development last night in the UK. Um, And what's basically happened is following the RB case, I'm not even going to say the guy's name, following the RB case, um, a member of parliament here, uh, I think they're the culture secretary, wrote to Rumble following the removal of the monetization of RB's account on YouTube and asked them to do the same over on Rumble. Uh, I think also suggesting that maybe this particular creator should be removed from their platform. We have to remember at this moment in time that this is so much more than about RB. Uh, This is about uh, accusations or allegations that can be made against somebody or behaviour that is deemed inappropriate, which does not have to be sexual in nature. It could be many different things. It could be the fact that you go on a march or you chain yourself to a railing because it's a a cause that you're passionately um, committed to and wanting to, you know, bring awareness to, but it can be held against you. Indeed, the uh, ruling by uh, YouTube with regards to RB is uh, the removal of the money side of things is actually linked into behavior off screen, not on screen. So what happened yesterday, as I say, member of parliament from the UK contacted Rumble, asked them to remove him from their channel as well. And there was a response by the CEO of Rumble. I won't read it in entirety. You can find it for yourself. Um, But he basically, these are the last two paragraphs, which are key. He says, uh, we regard it as deeply inappropriate and dangerous that the UK Parliament would attempt to control who is allowed to speak on our platform or to earn a living from doing so. Singling out an individual and demanding his ban is even more disturbing, given the absence of any connection between the allegations and his content on Rumble. 
We don't agree with his behaviour. Sorry, we don't agree with the behaviour of many Rumble creators, but we refuse to penalise them for actions that have nothing to do with our platform. Although it may be politically and socially easier for Rumble to join a cancel culture mob, doing so would be a violation of our company's values and mission, and we empathically reject the UK Parliament's demands. As I say, this is much more than just about one particular man. Um, this it, There have been many people that have been, as you know, deplatformed for sailing a little bit too close to the wind with regards to political views, social views. Uh, the, and also health views. Um, there is, as I said in my last video, new guidance uh, whereby you are not allowed to talk about health-related matters, for example, on YouTube, um, that contravene guidance from the, the, the big organisation in our world. I'm not even going to mention the name of it. So what Metatron is asking me to do is make a strategic move. My controversial material will be moving off this platform um, and I am going to be taking down and removing from this platform videos linked into RB, videos linked into Madeleine McCann, videos linked into probably Julian Assange, videos linked into um, the pandemic and guidance that I gave during that time. Uh, I am sorry to have to do this, but I am protecting my account and I still would like to be here if they allow me to be here for many years more. So I'm not going to allow those subjects that I've covered to uh, uh, as an excuse for them to take me down. So that's what I've decided to do. In no way is the removal of any of these videos that I've done, me saying that I feel I was wrong or I got it wrong or I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. If anything, it is, uh, I'm feeling holy anger at having to do it. But uh, at the end of the day, sometimes we have to do things for self-preservation. I know most of you understand that. So uh, I will put the link to my new Rumble account in the um, description box here. Um, it is quite a straightforward link and I'll show you what my page looks like on there. And then we'll get to, yeah, my, so that's what my page looks like on Rumble. Um, already there are a couple of scammers pretending to be me, but always go for the account that's obviously got the most number of views, not the most, most number of views, the most number of followers. So at the moment, this account has got 4.1 thousand followers. Um, I did actually join Rumble a year ago, and then I decided for whatever reason that the timing wasn't right for me, um, but I'm getting the green light to go there now. So as it stands today, Thursday morning at half past 11, there's 4.1 followers. That figure will grow through the day and coming days. So that's how you know that you're actually on my official page, okay? Uh, at the moment, there's only about um, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's eight videos up. Uh, what I will be doing over the coming days and weeks is transferring old material there. So please just allow me a little bit of... Um, space to do that before I start putting new material on there. But certainly I will be talking about um, the stuff that I can't talk about on YouTube there. Okay. So in, just in terms of housekeeping, please remember, oh, hold on, that's me talking. <laughs> I'm coming at you from two different places. Well, I am actually, aren't I? Yeah. Um, housekeeping. So as with all of my social media accounts, Anybody that approaches you pretending to be me, offering you a free reading, let's just nail that right at the start before I even commence my rumble journey that I do not offer personal readings. I do not message you, ask you to follow me. If any of that happens, it's not me on any channel that you're watching me on, including here on YouTube. Um, the other thing with regards to rumble is that historically across all of my platforms, uh, I've tried to moderate comments in terms of keeping out maybe some of the more unpleasant stuff. 
uh, some of the trolling, some of the arguments that can happen. Um, I do not have the energy to do that on a fourth platform. So although I will be reading some of the comments on Rumble from time to time, I'm not going to be there every day looking at it. What I would suggest is if you are there and you find something that is particularly offensive that somebody has said or that they are putting links up that are inappropriate, you can email my team. I will put the email addresses below and they will tell me and I will have a look at it. OK, but uh, I want the Rumble account to be more self we should be able to self-govern ourselves at the end of the day. So I have got a strong mothering energy. That has always been my intention in terms of trying to keep things polite and nice <laughs> across all of my channels. But I do know that there are um, accounts and channels on Rumble, as the CEO of Rumble says, that he doesn't necessarily agree with, approve of. But that's the whole point about freedom of speech. So I suspect it'll be a mixed assortment of people on that account. New people will be finding me who don't necessarily understand my violet pill teachings or what I'm all about. Just let it go. OK, if there's any arguing in the comment threads, um, you know, this is a chance for all of us to um, be able to step back if we see any unpleasantness there. Um Anything else to say on that? I don't think so. I'm probably not allowed to say this, so I'll say this in a coded way. But one thing that crossed my mind yesterday is that my move across there is my little piece of action that I can take to show my displeasure uh, with this platform that you're watching me on in terms of OK, you won't allow me to say what I want to say, so I'm going to move somewhere else. I'll stay and you can have a bit of me, but you're not going to have all of me. Um, now, there are other ways that we can show our support in terms of other platforms that have better free speech. So one of them is just getting behind, for example, the CEO of Rumble. You can follow him on Twitter. You can just show your support in that way. I think he's very much under attack energy, not just from UK government, but other shadowy figures around. Um, but also there are things such as shares in companies, and I'll just leave it there. So that's something I might be looking at as well, um, because a lot of these money is money is really what they, the bottom line is what it's all about. Okay, I'm just going to leave it there. Uh Somebody said, or I, I read a comment on wherever it was the other day, and I really feel this, and I know that many of you have been feeling this for a while, but it's as though there is a, there is a spiritual war, we know that, but there's also a spiritual war between old and new media at the moment. And we don't have, we have some rising new media channels, but there will be more to come. But I also believe that even within old media, there are still good people there. And you should always remember this in terms of newspapers, online channels, and I would include YouTube in that as well. So even though I'm disagreeing with them with regards to uh, various things at the moment and taking action, I also know that YouTube is the platform that has brought you to me. Uh, it's raised a beautiful community and I don't wish to abandon that community. There are still very good people on YouTube. I would like to be one of them. So this move to New Earth and part of New Earth includes new ways of communication, new forms of media. Um, remember that it also necess necessitates um, high vibe, evolved, enlightened people having a foot in both camps. And that's really what I'm trying to do here, to keep a boot in both camps. And I would encourage you to do the same because I also see you as evolved and enlightened. Hopefully, if you've been watching me, you've been following my teachings, like me, you've been trying to stay heart-centered during these times. And, and absolutely, some days it's difficult, but the teaching is to always keep coming back to our heart then if all of the heart-centered people just 
you know, walk, um, then who's going to be there to help the people that are just awakening, for example, okay? So I do think that is important as well. This thing about freedom of speech, one other thing I'd like to mention is that in a previous video, I had mentioned about a doctor um, whose surname begins with B. It's ridiculous to be talking like this, I know. But Dr. B, let's just call him, who talks a lot about the ketogenic diet, okay? And uh, I said that I followed him. Don't follow the diet, I have to be honest, but I like what he says with regards to diet. Um, and a lot of people, uh, he's just been censored. Okay, so he's just been censored. And uh, whether he's got a strike or he's shadow banned, I'm not sure. He's got millions of followers on here. Okay, so they're going for the big guys. And uh, a lot of you, or quite a few of you came back and said, oh, yes, but don't you know he's a Scientologist? And it's almost like that's a reason that we can ban him. That's a reason that we can shadow ban him. That's a reason that we can censor him. Free speech is free speech. And freedom of speech basically means that we are, even if we don't listen, we don't have to stay in the same room as something that we don't want to listen to. But it does mean that there is a room in the house where it's allowed. And certainly with Dr. B, I have never once heard him talk about his spiritual or religious views ever on the hundreds and hundreds of videos that he's ever done. He's about health. But anyway, he's fighting a different battle in, with regards to uh, the censorship at the moment. We're all fighting a bit of a battle. And I would actually ask you to question the people that have got the really large followings out there. If they are, put it this way, if they're talking about politics and social themes of the day that are um, that are contentious, but they're only coming at it maybe from one particular perspective, but they are not being shadow banned, they are not being censored, they are not in fear of their channel. Ask yourself why that is, okay? Ask yourself why that is. And it probably will be because they are going along with the agreed script of the day. As soon as you take a step out of the agreed step, um, script of the day, you run into trouble, okay? Now, there are ways to manage this, and um, there's a few channels out there, I'm sure, who you follow as well, who know how to duck and dive, and um, a few who've had their channels taken away completely and deplatformed, but then rise again. Um, Sean A is one of them. Uh, he has been covering the RB scenario uh, extensively. A lot of videos every day from Sean A. Um, you can write his name below, but I'm not saying it out loud. Um, and, and he's good because he has people who have different opinions with regards to the whole story as well. But I will just mention him because one of the videos he did was with a lawyer and uh, they were talking about the fact that when he covered the J.E. case, okay, the case which has the list and the island, okay, that man who is no longer here, um, when he covered the J.E. case, uh, he actually was arrested by the police, taken into the police cell and questioned over his material he was putting out because he was trying to raise awareness of it. Um, he was released with a slap on the wrist, but also was told about this is how we do things. It's scare tactics, basically. Um, so this is the way it operates, okay? And But he's managed to get his channel up at least twice. But I don't want to have to be going through all this, you know? I, I'm here for to fight the good fight with all of you, but I think I can fight it better with a foot in both camps. So as I say, the controversial material from me will be on Rumble. The other stuff will be still here on YouTube. And um, let's just try and duck and dive as best we can through these days. Those of you that have followed me a while might remember that maybe a year, two years ago, Metatron said to me that we would be given a life raft. Um, well, we were on a life raft in terms of um, dealing with freedom of speech and where we can say it and that type of thing. And even though the channels that we have available to us right now to talk are not ideal, 
um, we're still sort of hanging on, you know, even if like our legs are off the raft and we're sort of slipping, but we're still on a life raft. Uh, but eventually there would be new uh, platforms that arise, which will be better. And right now, as I say, maybe they're not here, but we just do what we can. OK, uh, most important thing is just to keep staying in your heart. The last thing I, th oh, I will pull a few cards. I want to pull a few cards, but I also want, just wanted to mention one other thing. Again, this is documented. I don't know whether I said it on YouTube. I certainly said it on FB and Instagram. About a month ago, I had a dream about, do you remember me telling you about the dream I had? And I, I just said it was a prominent spiritual teacher who was into yoga. I didn't name who it was, although some of you guessed who it was, and I did confirm it. That was RB. I was dreaming about RB a month ago. And my dream now has particular spiritual significance, I think. I'm seeing now maybe what that was all about. Because remember, he knew that this um, takedown was about to happen anyway. Whether you think he's guilty or not, he, he knew it was about to happen. Uh, and in my dream, he was lying down and he was leaving his body. He was literally, I could see his spirit, his soul, his essence, whatever you want to call it, was leaving his body to the extent that he was about to literally leave his body completely. And I was there pushing him back into his body. When I say pushing him back in, I was pushing the essence in, pushing the soul essence in, back into his body. Now, at the time, I assumed it was linked into, he was just astral traveling. You know, he does yoga at the end of the day, he probably gets into enlightened states, whatever. I just assumed that's what it was. He, he was traveling a bit too far out of his body with regards to astral. But I am now wondering whether actually it's a, got a bit of a deeper meaning. And um, I, I'm just going to leave it there. So, you know, at the end of the day, remember, whoever it is that you want to stand up for, um, that you can do your bit in helping to keep them here, to protect them, to shield them, to, um, you know, I believe we're all a tribe at the end of the day. We're all a tribe. Okay. Now, one card I wanted to show you from the Christ Consciousness deck, which I think is very relevant to what's happening at the moment, is the card of Holy Anger. Okay, the card of Holy Anger. And I'd like to read you a few of the words that I've got for that. And then I'm also going to show you some other cards I pulled off camera with regards to this whole situation as well. But the card of holy anger, it says, be the change. It says, and just think about this in terms of freedom of speech, okay? So to care deeply and passionately for a cause, this planet and its people is to sometimes become disillusioned, disappointed, and full of rage at what we see happening around us. Injustice, greed, Inequality, poverty, destruction and abuse are hard to witness or experience during our time on earth. It's easy to get frustrated. However, as human beings, we need to master how and what we do with that anger and to channel it correctly to help create a better world rather than to seek vengeance or to harm another. In Jesus, we have a template to follow, since he himself had moments of fiercely calling out what he saw as wrong or the hypocrites of his day. However, I'll just paraphrase because it's quite a long bit that I've written here. It says, however, he never used violence or aggression and never stooped to a lower energy. Rather, as he showed elsewhere, we are taught to turn the other cheek, meaning not to retaliate with like for like, not to meet anger with anger, but to go higher, to take it to God, to turn a new page and to begin again, responding with our hearts, not our fists. You see, I would also say to respond with our pens, <laughs> okay, to respond with our words. You know that I have William T. Steed now as a new guide and, you know, journalist, of course, somebody who was imprisoned for trying to raise awareness of certain things when he was alive. And, you know, there is that expression, isn't there, that the pen is, the pen is mightier than the sword. So always remember that as well. The, uh, this poem, I don't know if it is a poem, um, but by Martin Naimola, 
I probably said that wrong, is of course very relevant for the times that we're in. This thing about persecution energy, cancel culture and, um, you know, okay, you're not allowed to speak your truth anymore. And a lot of people are like, well, that's okay because I didn't like that person anyway. And I didn't like what they were saying. That's okay. But then the next person is told, you can't speak out either. And it's like, oh, okay. Well, I sort of quite liked a bit of what they said, but okay then. And then it's the next person in the line. And at that point, somebody realizes, actually, I found that information quite helpful. That was, you know, that was helpful to me in terms of my diet or my health or whatever. And at that point, people start to wake up. So in that light, this very famous quote, um, first they came for the socialists and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. And then they came for me and there was no one left to speak for me. You know, there's many different variations of that very famous saying. And, of course, it uses a very, um, the, the most emotive subject uh, that we have in terms of uh, the persecution of the Jews, which was absolutely horrendous during the war. But we have to see persecution as being a ladder, a scale. And freedom of speech should matter to all of us for, if not for our own sake, for our children's sake and our um, grandchildren's sake. You know, I, I have uh, grown up children now, but one of them in particular at higher in higher education and the number of books that you're now, now not allowed to read or come with a warning, you know, even some very innocuous stuff. And that there has to be a fight back to this. There has to be a fight back to this. But we have to remember the, the, the teachings of Jesus as well, which is that we do it not with our fists. We do it with our hearts. We do it with our pens. We do it with our words. But we also need to know where it's safe to say those words. And then from that space, which grows bigger and stronger and mightier, where um, we become the, the majority over time. OK, it's a tipping tipping point type feel, because the truth is in my country, um, across mainstream media, uh, there's a, a new station, fairly new station. It's only been around for a year or two, maybe just a year. Uh, it's called GB News. You might not like it. You might love it. It doesn't matter what your opinion is of it. The point is they're trying to put some more alternative news into GB News. Um, they question the narrative of the day. And uh, they have controversial speakers on there, some people who I don't particularly like. Um, but again, they're allowed to have a platform. Uh, well, the point about GB News is that their viewing figures have gone through the roof. They have more people watching them than uh, the BBC and Sky um, whether it's combined or not, I don't know, but their figures are consistently showing that they're beating the mainstream channels. So it can be done, um, but it just needs enough people to, to care, basically, to be awake to it all. I will show you a couple of cards that I pulled this morning for myself, but are just really good, I think, and I want to show them. So I'd already made the decision, as I say, to move the controversial content to Rumble, but I was just, you know, having a little moment with Metatron and I, I said to him, okay, well, you know, what about YouTube? You know, is, is it okay here? Should, you know, all the rest of it. And these are the cards I got with regards to my platform on YouTube. The first card that came out was the card of judgment. The next two that cards that came out were the high priestess and the empress. And to me, these are two strong archetypal feminine energies um, very positive, both of them. The high priestess, the one who holds the wisdom, the secrets, the mysteries of the universe, whatever you want to call it, and the empress, the mother, uh, the one who is fertile, abundant. There's nothing but good with regards to the empress. Then the card of choice came out, the lovers, in terms of, okay, you have these two archetypal energies on your channel, um, but you've now got a choice to make. Uh, and make it quickly because we have the chariot, Metatron showing you the green light. And then we had the card of nine of swords, which is headaches, uh, worries, 
but it would all be okay because we have the six of wands, which is success. To me, they were sort of saying that we know this is a headache at the moment in terms of how to navigate this particular channel, what you can say on it, what you can't. Move away from those headaches and hassles and concerns with the chariot. Make the choice um, and ride to victory somewhere else, you know, or have double victories, some a victory here and a victory there. So I thought that was good. Right, I'm going to end, I think, with a couple of cards from the Starseed Oracle. I'm also very aware that, of course, tomorrow we've got, um, what have we got, Equinox. I've, I'm not really in the zone for it. I will probably, hopefully, I'll be in the zone by tomorrow. It's just that this has taken up all of my time and energy this week, trying to sort all this stuff out. And at the end of the day, the fight for freedom of speech and the strategy uh, that we need to adopt to uh, get there is the most important subject of the day. There are so many things happening in our world that we could be talking about, but until we've won this battle, you know, we're not gonna be able to talk about them. So anyway, uh, but we've got the full card there, which is nice, and the Queen of Wands and the Knight of Wands and the Eight of Wands got Freddie Mercury here. You know that song, um, Don't Stop Me Now. Don't stop me now, because I'm having a good time, having a good time. I can't remember what the words are, but yeah, Freddie, absolutely. Just carve your path, go for it, focus on what you can say in whatever place you're in, and then just, just do it. So that's good. Okay. Let's pull, I feel like I want to pull a couple of cards from the Starseed Oracle for you, which may be about this subject, they may not, I don't know. Let's uh, put these two back in and see what we get. So for the people watching, thank you for listening. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support on this channel, YouTube, which is my baby. I, you know, it's, I, I love this channel. So please don't abandon me here. Um, but please join me somewhere else as well if you want to, if you want to hear about that, these type of subjects that I can't talk about any longer on here. So as I say, definitely we'll be removing the RB stuff, the video. It's got about 60,000 viewers at the moment, but I'm taking it down, putting it over there. Uh, probably the Julian Assange stuff will be next. The uh, Madeline video I've been concerned about for a while. I've got about three or four videos. They're definitely going to go and they'll be over there. And uh, then I think the next tier will probably, unfortunately, be the pandemic stuff. But I think I did a video on Andrew Tate as well. That might have to go as well. But anyway, we'll see. Right. What is there to say, please, Metatron? Okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you. You see, this card I'm about to show you is the one that I pulled on Instagram yesterday or the day before, and it's come out again, guys. It's the card for Inner Earth, and it says, you'll survive this. It says, new solutions and beginnings. That's not just for me. That's for you. You'll survive this. Uh, new solutions and beginnings. It's Metatron's promise to us that we will find a new home um, or homes. <laughs> He's saying homes. It's, it's the analogy of, you know, if you're lucky enough to have a second home somewhere. So YouTube and here with me can be a home and we can come and we can talk about different things and that will be nice. But there's going to be another home somewhere else and it's going to be different and uh, it's going to feel different there. And that's the analogy that I'm getting. So I like that. So you'll survive this. There's new solutions and new beginnings. But we've also got this card which says water your garden, nourishment, body care, tenderness and rest. I don't know about you, but I felt exhausted. I know I've done a video on tiredness. This is different. This is this is this stuff that I've been talking about has been um, very taxing this week. It's been very difficult and also the, all of the friction energy. So I know that I need to do this and I am doing this. So after I've made this, I will be going and I probably said this in my last video, going to make myself a nice meal tonight, getting out in that sunshine, trying to rest, trying to sleep. You know, the body 
The body is unsettled, you see, by all of these changing frequencies and the flux, because what the body loves is security. Think about your body. What it loves is to feel secure, to feel safe. It's the first primary platform that we need before we can do anything else. Mas Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, so when there are all these restrictions, things you can't do, things you can't say, places you can't go um, coming in, as well as potential timelines that might come in that are, you know, a little bit frightening, even though I'm not in fear, they're still like, well, I don't want that, thank you very much, cancel, clear, delete, we'll have to do some work on that. So at a spiritual level, we get it, okay, and we know it's going to be okay, but your poor body doesn't necessarily know it. Your poor body is thinking, oh, hold on a minute, I'm, I'm having a bit of a wobble. I've got a headache. I'm feeling this. I'm feeling that. So be kind to your body through these days. These are difficult days. You know, there's... um. No, I won't say that here, but there's something else that's been going on in the UK recently, um linked to the mayor of London and potential plans in place there over and above the driving stuff, which is just, you know, I think it's along the line. I'm not even going to talk about it here. But again, cancel, clear, delete. We don't want that. Thank you very much. That's not the future that I want for myself, my children, my grandchildren. Um, I know we're going to be OK, but my body, my body needs to know it's going to be OK. So definitely an energy of needing to be hugged. <laughs> give yourself a hug. Ask someone to give you a hug. But it's also to do with how can you hug yourself in terms of nurturing yourself. Bring in the energy of Mother Mary uh, in particular. Remember, she's the safe harbour. She's the safe harbour. Um, her spray is by my bed, so I can't show it to you. But we have a Mother Mary safe harbour spray. Many of you use it. And the whole analogy of it is to do with when it's really getting turbulent and stormy out there at sea, analogy wise, come into my safe harbour. Within my safe harbour, you can bob around in your boat. You're OK. I've got you. The light is on. OK, you're going to be OK. And you can stay here for as long as you need to until you then got to go back out in back out there as it were. Okay. So Mary's energy, very important right now to help us. Uh, I also think in terms of my sprays, the spiritual protection spray is uh, very useful at this time. And throat chakra, you know, this is about the right to speak up. Uh, I've had a sore throat the last couple of days and it's not lost on me. Why? I'll just get the throat chakra spray. Because this is about trying to be silenced. They're trying to silence us. So you've got to keep your throat chakra very open. Look at the beautiful colour of that. Isn't that gorgeous? Aquamarine throat chakra. Let's have a bit of that. <laughs> In many ways. If you look at the colour of that aquamarine, it's the colour of this card, which is inner earth. You'll survive this. New solutions and beginnings. I think that's all I'd like to say today. Um, I will put the link to Rumble below and I will, if, if there's any of my videos on the subjects that I've mentioned that I'm going to be moving off here that you want to download, you've probably still got a couple of days to do it, okay? Uh, maybe with, with the exception of the RB video. Um, but as I say, it's all going to be over on Rumble. But yeah, a couple of days, if, if there's particular videos of mine that you liked, um, with regards to uh, the C pandemic. There's a whole playlist. Um, you can download them now or uh, MM or what was the other one? Assange. Uh, yeah, it is what it is. Strategic chess player is what we are, remember. OK, and we win. <laughs> Ultimately, we win. Keep a smile on your face, keep your heart open, keep your feet on the ground, keep your connection to spirit open at all times, shielded and protected. We will be fine. Lots of love. Thank you for listening. Take care, great care of yourself. Bye-bye for now. Bye.